Hi guys, everyone from around now. It's one to my review of Doctor Who Series Z Episode 5, The Sue and Gag Conundrum. I hope I pronounced that right. I can't remember exactly how to pronounce it, but I hope I've done it right. Um, there may be some minor spoilers ahead, so if you're having spoiled, turn off now. So it kicks off with the Doctor and her companions that are on a junkyard planet. And they're searching for some item. It's never actually specified what item they're searching for. They're just looking for some of them. And no real answer why they need them, but they're looking for them. And they're all searching this heap and trying to cover it. And unfortunately, one of them um, uncovers what he thought was what they wanted. Unfortunately, it's a booby trap, or it matched what their description. And they find themselves with a very nasty mine, I suppose. Some sort of suppose. If it goes off, they get themselves injured, and they find themselves woken up on a a I want to say hospital ship. It's more like a medical vac ship, um, shipping them off to be basically bear treated elsewhere. And shortly after they get up and, and introduce themselves to all the other characters, the sh medical ship is boarded by something unknown. And what we then get is a pretty standard um, star episode of the characters trapped somewhere they can't get out of and they have to figure out how to deal with the threat. It's an episode type we see fairly regularly, um, and I personally really like these episodes. Um, there's so many we see them throughout all seasons. Um, I think my favourite um, one was from a few seasons back, um, The God Delusion with um, Matt Smith, uh, Doctor. Um, that was one of my favourite versions of this episode, which was in a hotel, the same spaceship. So, a threat's on board, they've got to deal with it and find a way out of it. What's kind of nice, the threat they're dealing with as well, is not some... It hasn't got a... It's not got a malevolent purpose to it. It's just what is what it is. And they're having to work with it and decide based on how they know what they know about the creature and how to deal with it. That's kind of neat. What also is very neat is the characters in this episode are all pretty much competent. The people on board the ship... You're only in this situation we have an episode, there's usually maybe two characters sort of like step up to the mark to be, oh yeah, we can do this and do this and oh yeah, we'll we'll I know how to do that and oh yeah, we can defeat anything fine. But often the other characters are all a bit wishy washy, um, you know, they're they're the ones who you sure are gonna get killed quite early on. Normally they don't normally one of them survives, or they have to be sort of very much forced into doing something or heavily encouraged into doing a role to help them succeed, which they don't never really succeed at and everybody thinks they're great and the character develops. Not so much this one, all the characters are actually pretty competent. They know what they're doing, they know how to deal with it, they know their skills can work, they're all basically raring to go and say, yep, right, we can deal with this. There's one character who can't really get too involved, but he's got a good reason why he can't get involved. And that's really great and neat. Um, I mean, even the even the characters themselves, they've got a bit faulty to them, so one of the characters actually gives the Doctor telling off quite early on, for a good reason, they're not just having to go for no reason. I actually say, look, come on, what you're doing is actually silly, stupid, don't be selfish. Just think about what you're doing and you need to deal with it. And that character's authority actually doesn't feel... Often you feel when the authority figure deals Doctor that the a figure is almost against them in a way and you want to sort of say, no, the Doctor's right. But actually, no, this time he, they are pretty much spot on with what they're saying. There's a bit of banter back and forth um, with the Doctor as there normally is in this situation, but... The character is not being silly or being obstructive for the purpose of being obstructive. That's quite refreshing. And pretty much all the other characters bring their own little skills or what have you to the fore. And they're all up for it, which is great. They also have what's quite neat is they, the Doctor doesn't know what the threat is, but they actually, through their own knowledge and experience, identify it. Um, using other technology means they have at their disposal. Identify the threat, know and know what, how dangerous it is, get some warnings about it, and basically almost educate the Doctor and her gang what they're dealing with, and they have to figure out a way around it. You get the feeling that if the Doctor wasn't there, these people have actually got a fighting chance. All too often in these situations, in these episodes, you feel that if the Doctor wasn't there, they're all dead. There's no way they're going to get out of this. This one, I felt that they would have a fighting chance. And that's something you don't see too often in these episodes. It's always, even if they go somewhere that's meant to have a really, really experienced crew, you always get feeling that the crew has no chance, that if it was for want of the Doctor, they would all be dead. And it's nice, actually, I think to myself, well, this crew actually probably could have figured this out themselves eventually, maybe too late, or they at least would have a fighting chance to deal with it. That was kind of refreshing. Has got some odd moments too. There's a weird, about three quarters of the way through, random physics lecture, which, and it's, it's semi-relevant to the plot, but it feels very enforced. It made me think of, um, 
small spoiler for Rosa. Um, Yasmin and um, Ryan actually ha have seen outside a hotel in 1950s New um, um, Mississippi, I think. I can't remember where it was. Was it Alabama? Can't remember. Wherever they were. They're sat outside a hotel, a uh, motel, outside dump, and they're talking about racism all in days and how they still encounter it. And it felt very forced. It felt very like you'd expect to see like on a kid's school program it didn't f very on it's all like very clear the message it wasn't very natural this is similar in here there's this little link for only about a minute it's only bare it's probably about two minutes long to be fair if that scene where they lecture out and it just feels that you know, they've put it in there just to either show off oh we know what we're talking about or just to somehow get some education they just felt a bit weird it didn't fit in it didn't flow i felt like well that should have been edited out that's the only also major strain moment of it. Oh, so one benefit to this episode compared to last week's episode, it actually ties up pretty much all its loose ends at the very end. There aren't really anything to worry about at the very end. It's all tied together quite nicely. There's one little moment I think myself, how do they know? Um, there's a song There's a song at one point and they all know what the words are. I've never seen it before. Perhaps it's the same thing they get taught. I don't know. Perhaps it's part of guitar's induction. You learn the song. I don't know. But... It ties all these things, so it actually fin it comes to a conclusion. Last week's episode had too many bits at the end which either left a bad taste or were basically loose um, potholes. Not so much this episode. It really does neatly tie together all the end. So actually, yep, yeah, works really well and really nice. Uh, so characters this episode. Um, obviously, you've got the normal Tardis gang. Um... Nothing particularly major happens in this episode. We learn a bit more about Ryan and his background, particularly his relationship with his father and his original mother. We learn about why she's not around. Um, and it's sort of, it's you, and also once again, him and Graham put in a situation where they are going to have to work together. And it's sort of, it feels like it's coming to a point where they are starting to connect, although it does feel a little bit. For the last few weeks, I've been feeling that they've been starting to really connect together and learn to work together and deal with each other and actually have a proper relationship. Um, but then, for some reason, at a moment, um, between the two characters, right towards the end, they one of them tries to, well, Graham tries to instigate a sort of collaborative celebration and it's rebuffed. And that felt a little bit strange because last week they seemed to have been getting on and sort of like bonding quite well. And also, it just felt a bit bounced off. Perhaps, it's, I mean, that's probably relatively realistic, actually, now I think about it. It's probably some people, although they may seem like really going well, actual fact, it takes a lot for them to actually split up and keep and, and make that connection. So other characters we've got, again, being a small episode, you tend to have a few characters who tend to get smoky developed reasonably well and you have to get their plots quite quick crossed. So we have um, brother and sister Eve and Dirkus Cicero, and the sister is a general one of pilots. Dirk and the brother is an engineer um, and sister's on board ship for some medical issues and so forth. Those have their android with them um, who is called Ronan and he is with them to basically add support and help and it's all they are a bit set up where you think actually where does his lord he lies or he seems to be doing something that seems a little they seem to be doing something that seems a little bit naughty but it gets explained actually later on and makes sense in context. Uh, you've also got Astros and Mandla, Mam, sorry, Mavla, Mavlil, I think, yes. Um, and they are the two sort of um, nurses, they are the two sort of nurses, one's the head nurse, one's also a training nurse on the ship, who have to um, basically, well, Astros is actually in charge of the ship as well, and he gets thrust in a situation where he has to deal with it, and how he deals with it is very interesting. His character is very much a... He's not very, def not say defeatist, but he's very much a matter of fact. This is my book. This is what we're gonna do. He's straight down the line. He doesn't really get stressed about anything. He doesn't get stressed about anything. He's like, "This is how we're gonna deal with it," which and, and it's gonna work, um, which is quite neat. Um, the other character, Madeline, but she's a little bit more. At first, a bit more flaky, a bit more panicked because the situation she finds herself in. But she actually very quickly comes around and, get, and comes good. Uh, we've also got a, a chap called Yoss. Um, he's got a bit of a twist about which I won't spoil um, and he's sort of in the background quite a lot but he has a good reason why he's in the background quite a lot um, and he actually he does he adds a little bit he does add some a bit of extra minor jeopardy to the story um, but he's there for a reason he's got a good reason to be there and it worked and, and he fits in quite well so all the characters all pretty much 
I mean, done fairly well. Um, I mean, when I first saw Rowan, I thought he was a bit st strange. I thought the character was a bit rude. No, when we found out he's actually an android, so that makes kind of sense. I can't say I have any more problems with the characters. None of them annoyed me. None of them I disliked. They all seem to work quite well. So they have good chemistry between them. Obviously, it's very hard to get a lot of people, a lot of characterization in a very short space of time. But you get ideas about a character. You never get, you don't get fully fleshed out people, of course. But you definitely get a, a feeling, an idea of what these guys are like, which I personally liked. So on to production. Um, the episode is obviously a more sci-fi based episode. The ship sets look really neat, really nice. And I thought the early vista at the start of the episode when the jump planet looked really kind of cool. Um, it really saw sort of the world, it saw sort of desolate world just full of rubbish and dump and waste. Really neatly sold and sold that atmosphere to me and I really liked that. Um, and then when you move onto the ship it's all white and clean. It feels like hospital. It feels, does feel like hospital. And the way it's designed and how moves it looks, and which all makes sense in contact. It does look very and You think, well, this isn't very practical, but actually, it makes sense in contact. Contact and um, in con. Con. I forgot what the word is. It makes sense in context. That's the word. It makes sense in that situation, um, and it, and it bounces quite well. The actual alien creature um, who um, is a bit different, not our usual type of alien encounter. Um, I'm going to give one word um, to it, and that is Pokemon. Um, <laughs> would be my best way I can describe it. Um, it's fairly well done. It's, it's it, it, how it's all. Of, we see it move. We see it. We see it, it has a lot of screen time actually for a CGI creature. It has a fair amount of, C, a fair amount of screen time, and it's up to the normal Dot Two standard. Um, I do sometimes feel that Dot Two's graphics are starting to lag a little bit. I wonder. If, I don't know how much budget they've got if they've not been increased enough, but they do feel like they're a little lagging and slightly behind some of the other things we've seen in other series. But it's it's good enough for the TV, and it and little little chat works quite well on screen, and it's got some amusing moments to him as well. Um, so actually, for abduction wise, very good. Writing Christian or again, um, he's. I think some get he's all stride a little bit of writing Doctor Who. Um, last week's episode I said wasn't brilliant. This week's definitely a lot more feels like a lot more complete and better finished episode. So it's definitely it feels like got a bit of a stride going on there. So yeah, he's got his good episodes. I just hope it's gonna be another Moffat has very up and down style writing episodes. He feels a bit more he's hopefully he'll be a bit more consistent, which we'll see as the series progresses overall. So my final thoughts is, yes, I really like this episode, really enjoyed it from start to finish. Um, I like the way it was placed, I like the way it was written, I like the way it started it, I like the storyline. You know, simple but can't have simple, it's a simple storyline, we've seen it hundreds, dozens of times before, but it felt fresh enough that that didn't worry me too much. Um, had so, I mean, there's nothing particularly neatly twisted, there's no sort of big twists about it, apart from the characters actually being competent for a change, which makes a difference. Um... But it worked very well. I like the way the characters were together. I like the way they knew what they were doing. Um, yeah, it felt it did, and it, it felt like an actual well written episode. So yeah, I find this episode a really good, good thumbs up for me for this episode. I've really enjoyed it. Well, thank you very much for watching. I'm the Suffolk Ram. Um, if you enjoyed this, please um, appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, um, and you know follow us, and you, know, you can follow us on the various other media form like. Um, on Facebook, we've got, well, I guess we've got Google+, Plus, but that's going to be gone soon, so I won't worry about that. Um, we've got a website as well, randers.com. Um, we put, I post stuff on there generally for new reviews and stuff coming up. Um, we do podcasts as well on a bi-weekly basis. And if you're interested in a bit of horror, last night actually, uh, or actually fairly as this morning technically, we did a live stream of Silent Hill 2. We recorded a seven and a half hour I think, live stream where we played through Silent Hill 2. Didn't actually get to complete it, so we've got to do another session to finish it off. But if you fancy an old school horror game, which is very, very, very dark, I mean dark and lack of light, then check that out as well. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Um, I look forward to seeing you on our next episode where we head to what looks like sort of oldie worldy India. So thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you then. So for me, Suffolk Ram, goodbye.